Hello everyone and welcome to Geopolitical Trends. So good to be with you as always. As an analyst, I ask, is New Zealand being forced to reverse its possession vis-a-vis -vis AUKUS? In this video, I am going to provide you with my assessments as to what took place just recently and react to some articles that have highlighted the serious consequences of these developments. Let's dive in. As you may recall, uh, I did a video a few weeks ago uh, uh, recently uh, in which I highlighted how the foreign minister of Australia, uh, Mahuta, uh, stood her ground and told U.S. Secretary of State Tony Blinken uh, so, sort of to his face that New Zealand has no interest or intentions of joining AUKUS. Well, Things are changing, but not because of her, it's because of her boss. There are now reports coming out of Wilmington in New Zealand suggest that given New Zealand's prime minister, which is Mahuta's boss, uh, uh, his name is Chris Hipkins, had to somehow reverse course. Now, the question that you and I would need to ask is, was he pressured? If so, by whom? and why. So one thing is sure is that, in my opinion, this change of policy, uh, if implemented, it's not implemented yet, but if it, it looks like it's going that direction, if it's implemented, it will reverse decades of New Zealand's neutral policy about nuclear free zone. That is what's concerning for that. So, so many observers agree that this move to join AUKUS will be a defining moment comes October uh, and in a few months from now because it will be general elections in New Zealand. So, so far, the polls inside New Zealand show that New Zealand's right-wing opposition party, which, by the way, it was a party that advocating for free market uh, economics and low taxation and, of course, reduced uh, uh, government size or involvement in that is. So what's going to be happening is that this party could, I say could, govern alongside the far-right Libertarian Act Party. Those are going to be interesting dynamics. You can just see where this is going. So, so one thing we all can agree on, considering this unexpected development, and this is what prompted me to come on the air, record this for you, and I will share with you more in a live stream if you like that one. So joining AUKUS will cut through New Zealand's identity. It will cut also through New Zealand's culture and everything else they stood for all this time, especially when it declared itself or its intentions to remain a nuclear free zone. And here is where history comes in. Using history as my guide, I find myself thinking about what took place in 1985. Let me just share with you what happened. Well, particularly, it was when the French Secret Service agents bombed Greenpeace a Rainbow Warrior vessel, which was anchored at that time in Auckland uh, Harbor. So, and what was the reason why they did that? Is to prevent it from leaving for further protests against France's nuclear test that was conducting at that time at the Mororo Atoll region. So, and by the way, I did the, dig into the research into this and I found that the Greenpeace photographer, his name is Fernando Pereira, was killed during that bombing uh, of the Rainbow Warrior. So, and I will provide you a link, by the way, where I found this one. So, so how did we get here? Well, the answer is simple, AUKUS. So, as you know, the United States succeeded in forcing, not inviting, in forcing Australia into the alliance with another Anglo country by the name UK. So the objective, of course, for all this AUKUS was nothing but to contain China, which I have argued on many occasions that it will not succeed. This containment policy will not succeed. It's too late for that. China has gone far. There is no way the West can uh, contain China now. 
So we all know that Australia now is sucked in against its will and its territory will be used in the event of any conflict in the region. Mark my word on it. I will even go further and, and state that it will be dragged into a military conflict whether Australia likes it or not. This is no different than Japan. This is no different than South Korea. This is no different than Philippines. Now we are putting question mark on New Zealand. So this is where the New Zealand PM, Chris Hipkins, comes in. When he said, and I quote, the government was open to conversations about AUKUS membership, end of quote. And I will provide you the link where it was. So, so it tells me right there what Mahota did. She stood her ground. She, every Australian was, every New Zealander rather, was so proud of her. And now you got her boss reversing, in other words, throwing her under the bus. So here's the thing. I also digged into this and I found that recent disclosures of government papers under the new defense policy and strategy stated, and I quote, August Pillar 2 may present an opportunity for New Zealand to cooperate with close security partners on emerging technologies, end of quote. That's nothing but a lie. It has nothing to do with this. It has to do with being forced to join uh, uh, AUKUS, because as you know, New Zealand is part of the Five Eyes. We all know where this is headed. What do you think New Zealand will do? Just make sure to leave me some answers in the comment section. I would like to read your, your feedback on this. And if you guys would like me to elaborate even further on this, I'd be happy to do it in a live stream. Just, just let me know. So please hit the like button. If you like the content of this video and don't forget to subscribe, I will greatly appreciate it. As always, remember geopolitics impact your daily life in more ways than one. Till next time. Bye-bye.